Before the modern Japan we know today, the ninja works secretly in the shadows for hundreds of years. Public records about the ninja are scarce. Ninja Truth We've all heard about the ninja, but what do we really know about them? You've probably seen them in the movies and in comics, these shadow warriors of the night with incredible fighting skills and almost mystical abilities. But these spies with secret skills really did exist. And in this program, we're going to separate ninja fact from ninja fiction. Today, we're looking at this weapon, cleverly developed to startle enemies in sneak attacks. It's called Kusarigama. Literally meaning chain and sickle. It's a sickle with an iron ball at the end of a connecting chain. Let's see one of these attacks. throwing the weight at an enemy's weak point. The chain limits the opponent's ability to move. The sickle delivers the finishing blow. This is how the Kusuri Gamma was used, even when the opponent had two swords. of the weight, chain, and sickle enables such attacks. So how did this farmer's tool become a weapon? We asked Professor Yuji Yamada at Mie University, a leading expert in ninja studies. The ninja were originally farmers, so sickles were a familiar tool, commonly used for harvesting and readily available when fighting. In those days, only warriors were permitted to carry swords. But a sickle was an object that a farmer could carry without arousing suspicion. The Kusarigana combination made the sickle even more deadly. They are especially handy when fighting from a distance, so it's quite possible that advantage was applied when attacking opponents. In a society with few inconspicuous options, the ninja transformed the sickle into a master weapon. It's surprising to think that several hundred years ago, people actually fought with these weapons. Zukin, the distinctive hoods worn by the ninja. A must-have item for concealing one's identity. They could also be used in many other ways, such as ropes or to bandage wounds. 
Adrian's had a wrap and Ninja's style hood. Start with an unfurled piece of cloth, 2 inches long and 50 centimeters wide. Use that to cover your head. The important point is that the cloth is well centered on your head. Next, press the edge of the cloth along the forehead. Use your fingers on the left and right to keep it firmly in place. Then, use hanging cloth from the right side to cover your nose. Use your fingers to hold the cloth firmly in place. Wrap the ends of the cloth across the front of your face. And tie them together in the back. Your ninja hood is now complete. This is the ninja. The main function of the ninja was to gather information and report back to their masters. So what they did was practice techniques to avoid combat and instead simply escape. Let's discover more. Next, we'll look at ninja hiding techniques. It's said that they could disappear suddenly with just a single sheet of cloth. So how do they do it? The ninja are masters of the art of concealment. I've got a sight cam on. What we're going to do now is test a technique known as hiding like a quail. Oh, ninja, wait! Oh, ninja, wait! There's about 10 meters distance between me and the ninja. I thought I could catch up with him. But he's vanished. Let's see that again. The ninja slipped into a blind spot. And disappeared from sight. He vanished before my very eyes. Where could he have gotten to? Many ninja skills are based on doing something your opponent would never expect. When you're chasing someone, you assume they'll try to get far away from you. So the unexpected thing to do is stay close and pose as something, such as a rock. I think ninja skills are distinctive for making so much use of human psychology. Uzuragakure, hiding like a quail meant evading the enemy by covering yourself and keeping as still as a stone. This mimics how some animals stay still and blend into the scenery when in danger. The ninja had a number of other ways to hide. Tanuki Gakure, hiding like a raccoon. Taking a hint from raccoons, ninja would climb up trees and conceal themselves. Kanon Gakure, hiding like a canon statue. This meant standing completely still as a Buddha statue. Konoha Gakure, Hiding in fallen leaves. Have the enemy go right past you by hiding under a pile of leaves. The ninja were certainly masters at hiding. Resurrecting the ancient technique of hiding like a quail using modern technology. This is known as optical camouflage. <laughs> A 
that's really quite effective, isn't it? That's amazing. I guess this is a case of modern day ninja technology. A single layer of fabric allows a person to blend in with the scenery, just like the coil technique. How is this possible? We visited a researcher who helped invent this. Professor Masahiko Inami at the University of Tokyo. Have a look at this. I'm wearing a grey coat. It looks like a normal coat, but when I flip the switch, it seems to become transparent. You can see things behind me. That's the new technology. This is optical camouflage. The material has the unusual property of reflecting light back directly. So video images of the background projected onto the material create the illusion that it's blending into the scenery. Professor Inami is looking for practical applications for this technology. It could be used inside a car so that when you're backing up, your blind spot is gone and you can see everything, as if the car were invisible. There's research underway to enhance human abilities using robotics and computers. So in the near future, the technologies we're working on might allow a person to seem to be in several places at once, like the ninja did. That's one direction this research is headed. Which means that by using these new technologies, anyone could become a ninja. to the best of their abilities, it was imperative that the ninja keep an even temper. Ninja practiced a mental exercise known as Kujigo Shinpo, moving their hands and reciting nine words to calm their minds and focus on their work. These nine words together form a sentence meaning the army of gods that befriend us is moving forward. The corresponding hand formations were known as in omosubu. These gestures were a way of strengthening the ninja's ties to Buddhism, connecting the ninja to the heavens, and calling upon divine powers. There's a simple way for us to practice Kujiko Shinpo too. Hold your hands as if you are holding a sword, and recite the words as you slice vertically and horizontally through the air. Well, from what we've seen, the ninja certainly had some fascinating tools, weapons, and techniques at their disposal. Their work and their situations called for a high level of creativity, secrecy, and skill. Some were myths, but some were truths. Next time, we'll discover even more in our search for the truth about the ninja. <laughs>